All right. We're going to bring things to a close with a woman who hates me. What? Unbelievable as it is, the last time I was this close to Nancy White was almost 30 years ago, and she really had a hard on for me. I mean, like, because, because I had hired away her producer. He was this young whippersnapper. His name was Ivan Fitzan. Gave him his first job in TV, and was she was yesterday. mighty. Yeah. Yeah. No, I sent him a muffin once through CBC Transport. Yeah. CBC used to have its own taxis, and uh, I sent him on a muffin when he was at C City TV. That's the most profligate use of government money I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so you all know Nancy. She, well, Nancy, you do it. Did you want to introduce me more? Thank you. Hello. This is Bob Johnston at the piano. I was, I was so, of course, like every one of us, I was so thrilled to be invited to be at Idea City. The, 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 the limo came to my door with the invitation, and I thought, at le well, it's the dream of every chatty person, you know, 20 minutes to just shoot the breeze and, uh, and, and spread your ideas like world domination or whatever throughout the, the audience. And I had lots of ideas I had. <coughs> uh, my idea would be that you should put turn signals on the radio antenna of a car so that somebody four cars back can know to get into the right-hand lane a little sooner. That's one idea I was going to talk about. And uh, My little brother in PEI, Woody White, has an idea that we should put old folks' homes in malls. <laughs> well, really, you know, because <laughs> when you can't get around, you could at least be in the middle of the community, you know, so it's quite a good idea. Then I discovered you only wanted me to sing. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. But well, I thought I would at least try to sing some songs with some ideas in them. So I'm going to, uh, as people have been doing here, I'm going to kind of describe my program, and then I'll do it, and then I'll run out of time, and we won't do the last number probably, but we'll, 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 we'll do the best. That seems to be the, the pattern of desperation here. in a multicultural city, as we all know, and uh, it's always been my theory that we should be able to choose whatever nationality we like and kind of go with that. So uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. This is called The Ballad of the Wannabe. There was a time in my life when I wanted to be Chilean, like the sensuous Juanito, who was my boyfriend at the time. I studied with his language with my clumsy adult tongue And I sang Chilean songs which probably drove his buddies crazy But finally I faced the fact that I was just another gringa Like those big Americans it pleased us so to mock So I turned in resignation to my rich Canadian culture And I learned to say, oh look, he shoots, he scores <laughs> There was a time in my life when I wanted to be French like the glamorous Pierre, who was my boyfriend at the time. I struggled with his language, with my clumsy adult tongue, and I even found a place with a bidet. But finally, I faced the fact that I was still a tech cadet who sounded like Joe Clark and ordered water with my meals. So I turned in resignation to my rich Canadian culture, and I learned the words to Jagged Little Pill. Although your heart may break, think of your mother, how it would bring her joy if you date a Canadian boy. I thought if it's to be Canadian, I should get it right. So I went to several powwows where I met hilarious honor. I struggled with his language with my clumsy adult tongue till I realized he didn't know it either. I said, he said, take me to your trap line. He said, what books are you reading? I live at Bloor and Sherburn, and I'm studying at Ryerson. And when I heard you sing, I frankly thought you were Chilean. But you're just a boring white girl, so goodbye. Be who you are, it's the best course to take. Stick to your own kind, don't your heart may break. Think of your mother, how it would bring her joy if you dated. 
dated a Canadian, and by Canadian she would mean, you know, English speaking and uh, Protestant. Boy, speaking like, I've discovered that it's very good to use chopsticks to get the bagels out of the toasters. Avoids that pesky electric shock we all hate so much. <laughs> I, I decided to do this, this song is called River Mend My Heart. Most of these songs are from uh, a CD I did called uh, Stickers on Fruit, and uh, which is another idea I might discuss, but I'm, I'm not gonna get into it right now. But. Um, this song, River Mend My Heart, is, uh, it not only talks about the, the, the purifying powers of, of water, being out on the water, but it's also a, a song about one of the best, one of the most interesting thinkers we ever had in our country. And I think the song really says that no matter how, uh, how smart you are and how successful, sometimes your personal life can just, just kind of unravel around you. Skin jacket and old canoe, sky and the water the same deep blue. And oh, Maggie, if you'd only the truth, I wouldn't be here all alone on the river, out on the river alone. Close my eyes and.
Okay, here's a little, a little song about this conference. My first time to come to this conference because it's uh, certainly beyond my means, but I was very excited to find the Aveda. Do you know what the Aveda thing was in the, in the loot bag? I had to look it up on the web. My little daughter was so excited. She's 17. Oh, Aveda! It's hair wax. I know. So uh, you can spike it and you can, it's very exciting. Anyway, so thank you to them. Thank you to our corporate sponsors. <laughs> See, if I mention our corporate sponsors, then I can plug my own album. Isn't that the way it works? I heard uh, it says in the program not to make any commercial pitches. I certainly have heard a few here. So uh, I need it more than Aveda does, frankly. Did I mention I had two teenage daughters? It's like living with panhandlers, but anyway. So this has been a, a fabulous week. I have two more songs to go. I'm going to do this one first as a tribute to the vision of, of Moses and the, the team and everything. Moses wanted me to do a wicked song where I would hang around. I didn't know this till last night. I would just sleaze around the conference and watch everybody and take notes and then write a, a song about how everyone was like a loser and, 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 and <laughs> this presentation sucked and uh, that guy was kind of lame and all that stuff. And I thought, well, this will really make me popular at the party later on. So anyway, I, I, I can't write that quickly. I can, but I can't uh, memorize it. But anyway, this is called, this song is called Idea. It's just an idea, a little thought I had. It came to me in the shower, or maybe I got it from my dad when I was very small. And I tucked it away for a sunnier day or a receptive ear. I think that ear is here. I'll give you my idea, but I require a deal. You have to give me a thought in exchange. Hope it's one you didn't steal from off the internet. Not that I really care, just as long as you share a very receptive ear. Like all the people here, here, here in Idea City, safe among the wise and witty, the women's heart, the men so pretty, this can't be Toronto, that town without pity, well I know that if I say knock knock, someone is gonna say who's there, and if you get sick and sick, At Idea City. Okay. It's the genius of Moses, and here you must agree to call her this high priced talent and make you perform without a fee. And think it honors you, and what's much more bizarre, you don't bolt for the bar when someone else is on. This is a fine salon Here in Idea City Safe among the wise and witty The women smart, the men so pretty This can't be Toronto, that town without pity Well, I know that if I say knock, knock Someone is gonna say Who's that? And if you get sick at sea You're gonna call it Maldemare At Idea City it's just an idea. It's just an idea. It's just an idea. Thank you. <laughs> it's easier with a bunch of songs to keep to the program, isn't it? Although some of us are a little chatty and we're kind of trying to control these tendencies. All right, well, I have a song, uh, we'll finish with a song that's uh, uh, about the, the, the writing process. I know there's a lot of writers here tonight. I'm sure the song doesn't apply to, to Jane, who obviously gets the job done, but uh, I also know there's a lot of, lot of us out there who've been at Idea City and we've been watching all these amazing high-powered people and we feel just like schleppers and, you know, <laughs> L7 and uh, uh, that we don't really get much done. and, and uh, uh, so this song is, well, it's not very comforting, but it does explain how some people do get sidetracked 
in the cross in the process of uh, producing uh, whatever. Writing always makes me want to clean. Any writer knows just what I mean. When a deadline's on my tail, I get out the mop and pail. And if I'm up against the gun, there's an errand I must run. Write a half a verse and play it back. Two more lines, hey, I deserve a snack. Well, the fridge goes hum and the microwave goes ding, ding, ding. Some days that's the only song I sing, sing, sing. Doing that procrastination rag. Find a good excuse to stop or up creative juice. Is it just me? Why am I so bold, lazy? All of my procrastination brings me sorrow. Of course, I will not think about it till tomorrow. Cause I can make myself get something done, but nobody loves a man. So I'm doing the procrastination right. There's a singer known as Stella Walker. It's not true, she's got a rougher rocker. She gave me the song to write, not cause I'm so erudite. She's the bomb, she could do it, but she'd never get round to it. The singers have a very full agenda. I got to get that gin into the blender. She's gotta shop for shoes and read reviews and call up her mom and friend. So she's doing the procrastination rag. Procrastination rag. Call your no, I'm an awful scallywag. Always find a good excuse to stop or up creative juice. Is it just me? Why am I so bold and lazy? All of my procrastination brings me sorrow. Of course, I will not think about it till tomorrow. I can make myself get something done, but nobody loves a rag. So I'm doing the fur balls off my sweaters, CDs that I mean to send, children's clothes I ought to mend. And actually, that's actually as far as I got with the song, because what happened was I went out into the kitchen to get a snack, and the Globe and Mail crossword puzzle was kind of winking at me from the island in the kitchen. And I said to myself, okay, I'm going to do three clues, only three clues, then I'll get back to the piano. But the third clue was this geography clue, and I don't know about you, Ronnie, but I'm very bad at geography, so I keep a little paper atlas right beside my uh, crossword puzzle, and I noticed that there was a big tear in the cover, and I said to myself, well, you know, if I don't fix that now, I never will. So I went to my office to look for the scotch tape, and the scotch tape wasn't there. I said, oh, I know who's got that. I went upstairs to my daughter Susie's room looking for the scotch tape. I didn't find it, but you know, her gym clothes were kind of in a festering heap in the corner, and I said to myself, I wonder if she's got gym tomorrow. She's going to need those. So I checked her schedule, and indeed she did have gym. So I took the clothes to the basement. While I was waiting for the stain away to set, I kind of glanced around, and uh, there were a lot of cobwebs on my ceiling and normally I'm not how anal retentive do I seem but I, I just really thought well the gas man was coming the very next day I thought what if the word gets around I'll never get invited to Idea City if the gas man finds cobwebs on my ceiling after all so so I went upstairs to get my squiffer now of course, I don't use the refills, the real refills, because they're far too expensive. So I just take a J-cloth, I spray it with the end dust, and then I use it. So I got the end dust out. I'm shaking the can. It's empty. Could you die? So I thought, if I don't do that now, I never will. So I went to the corner store to get some new end dust, and I got some. And I came back home, and the kids were home from school by then. Well, I can't write when there's anybody else in the house. Who can? Plus, they were watching TV, and you know, we're all told we must watch with them. Isn't that right, Moses? So that we can put what they're watching into a moral and ethical perspective. And uh, so uh, that was it for that day. I never did get the song written, and now I'm just, I'm sitting around, I'm sitting around, I'm sitting around, sitting around, sitting around, doing the procrastination. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bob Johnson at the piano. Thank you. 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 Thank you.